Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here, and this video is going to be another Yu-Gi-Oh! deck profile video, and this is just a little side project I've been messing around with in my spare time, just to have a little bit of fun in the game, you know, with Masterpieces, with Dridents, with Zodiacs, with Totally Awesomes and Nonsense, it can be really easy to lose sight of uh, things that you enjoy messing around with, and so this is a little pet project I've been messing with, just to have a little bit of fun, and it should be pretty obvious what has brought that on. The release of Duelist Alliance in Maximum Crisis, is a new card that directly supports pendulum based decks and pendulum based themes so I decided I wanted to mess around with this as a rogue option and see what we could get out of it basically so this there's no zoo cards there's no true draco cards well there are some zoo cards in the extra deck but as far as the main deck goes it's a good old-fashioned performer pal draco slayer deck a draco pal deck from the 2016 era basically utilizing the new support card in the form of duelist alliance and so this is definitely one of the more like viable like competitively viable rogue options it's definitely not something i'd consider like super meta friendly super meta defining uh but you could definitely have some success at like a semi-competitive locals with this at a lesser tier locals as well uh or even maybe some small regionals you could probably play a deck like this and it would probably you know get you somewhere decently well uh but i definitely have alternatives to this list i have a zodiac performer pal list that i love to mess around with uh for the new format as well i might show that on the channel a little bit later but for now it's just Performer Pal Draco Slayers, man. It's just Draco Pals. And we're just trying to abuse Duelist Alliance in whatever way possible and just have big Pendulum Summons. And that's what this deck does very well. But anyway, three copies of Performer Pal Pendulum Sorcerer. It's obviously searchable off Duelist Alliance, so a little bit of add consistency to the deck there without having conflicting normal summons and nonsense. One copy of Performer Pal Skullcrabat Joker. One Performer Pal Turtle, And two copies of Lizard Draw for the obvious, you know, just draw two combo, the Pot of Greed combo. And then for Sky Iris targets, Perform Pal Odd Eyes Light Phoenix and Perform Pal Odd Eyes Unicorn. These just are strictly better than uh, than the Absolute Dragon and Mirage Dragon, um, specifically just because these guys, their effects, is, their like effects come up. Uh, Mirage Dragon is the only thing that's kind of like interchangeable with this because it's a level three, but its effects just aren't relevant. Whereas like these actually do come up, and this is a Perform Pal. And, like, the only thing that's bad about this card is that it's a scale 3, but in this sort of deck, that actually doesn't matter that much. Uh, whereas Persona Dragon's 1 scale is obviously more enticing. But it's just, it's, it's, ultimately, the Performer Pound names make these cards a bit superior to the Odd Eyes, Mirage, and Persona Dragon scales. But anyway, for the Draco Slayer Engine, we've got a Luster, we've got Triple Master, and we've got one Lector Pendulum to be the Draco face-off target. I was trying to mess around with Vector and all that, but it was just too many. Um, I'm, honestly, you really don't worry about it too much because of the fact that you have Duelist Alliance to like do other things but Draco Face Off is still a really nice key plus one and so resolving it is kind of cool but I'm not going to play more than one basically like bullshit vanilla um, in order to uh, resolve Face Off the couple of times that I draw it especially considering that Duelist Alliance can search Luster uh, and Ariadne can search Luster and all that sort of stuff which speaking of Ariadne or not Ariadne um, in this instance, but yeah, speaking of Ariadne, I play Triple Abductor and two Ariadne. Uh, the Abductor works very well with like Duelist Alliance because Duelist Alliance has to be activated when you have a scale. So like you can just go Abductor in your scale, activate Duelist Alliance, and then that's already a counter. And then whatever scale you're searching, whether it be like Pendulum Sorcerer or Luster Pendulum, is another counter. So then you're just one counter off of getting a search for something. Uh, and then Guiding Ariadne is just another card that you can search off of your Abductor. It's another low scale. It synergizes really well with your Luster and your Pendulum Sorcerer, which are more accessible than they've ever been before because of Duelist Alliance, uh, giving you access into those. And then it also just works well with Sky Iris, which also just synergizes really well with the rest of the deck and the rest of the engine. So, And also Solemn Strike is just really good right now against like decks like the Dinosaur True King deck. Um, like, all these decks that are, like, really, like, hyped up because of people, like, expecting to play True Kings in them, like, Cosmo True King, Dino True King, and stuff like that. Like, Solemn Strike and Solemn Warning are really good against those decks because if you hit the True King, usually, like, the Earth True King and the Dino deck, for example, their turn almost basically just ends. And so being able to search Ariadne and then search Counter Traps to allow you to just not let them play Yu-Gi-Oh! is actually just really good. Like, there's not really that many good traps in the format right now because of, like, the true Draco presence, but... Like, the strikes and warnings are definitely the strongest ones as far as trap presence to have because of how they interact in other matchups. But two copies of Archfiend Centric just to be a high scale and generically good back row removal. Uh, people are trying to play Domain in my area specifically from what I've seen uh, in their True Draco decks. So being able to search this off Ariadne and pop the Domain, pretty important, pretty good. 
Uh, but then, as far as the rest of the monsters, it's literally four hand traps. It's two copies of Ash Blossom, one copy of Maxi, and then one copy of Effect Veiler. This was the third Ash Blossom, but with the way this deck functions, with how it has really easy access into Luster Pendulum uh, and stuff like that off of your uh, Draco Face-Offs, your, your, um, your Abductors, your Duelist Alliance, all that sort of nonsense, it's very easy for you to Pendulum Summon out an Abductor alongside your uh, like Pendulum Sorcerer or something like that. And what that allows you to do is that allows you to very easily generate three counters to search a hand trap. And even though Valor isn't very amazing in the format right now, it still puts in a little bit of work in niche situations. It makes it harder for your opponents to out your established boards, knowing that they have to play around a Valor as well, on top of what other, other else might be there, like Max Caesar Ghost Ash. Uh, but being able to just search the Valor uh, seems like a fine option to like warrant it being played. It's Like I said, it's one of the weaker hand traps right now. Uh, but it is still like got its applications like against Nordens and stuff like that. Like you just Valor Nordens, you can Valor things uh, that are like really impactful. Like you can Valor a Utopia the Lightning before they enter battle phase. Uh, so there's like little niche interactions that that kind of stuff has. But that is 25 monsters. And going into the spells, there are 10 of them. There's two Sky Iris and two Terraforming. And then an Odd Eyes Fusion just to go along with it. Odd Eyes Fusion is just a really strong going second card. It gets sided out every game you go first in this specific deck. Just because it's really hard to resolve. In decks like the Zoo Engine one, where you just generate a lot of extra cards, uh, this is the card that like almost never leaves the deck, but it's just too good to have going second against the field to just not have in your deck because of the fact that you can Sky Iris into it, so you essentially have five copies of it, but sometimes it is a brick. But the main thing is Sky Iris and Terraforming just work really well with your Magical Abductor and also just getting your like Pendulum Summons to be really big. Uh, but then we have one copy of Draco Faceoff and two copies of Duelist Alliance. Now this is a card that I think I might bump up to three. It just depends on how I like these Painful Decisions at two. I'm playing two Painful Decision specifically because with the Draco Slayer Fusion like lineup, with with how you end up doing your Draco Slayer nonsense, going into like your uh, Dynamis Powerful um, dude, like it just it works much better in your favor to have Master uh, to have uh, the Master Pendulum into the graveyard as well because then you can start reviving it off of your fusion and you just get a really large play string of like things that you're able to do off of this like this just enables more cards to like happen in sequence um like a bit more effectively than duelist alliance does and duelist alliance is also a hard once per turn so like i wanted to keep like a minimum of cards that are hard once per turn effects uh, whereas, like, that's why there's not three Painful Decision, that's why there's not three Duelist Alliance. But Duelist Alliance might be good enough that it just warrants being bumped to three anyway, even though it is a hard once per turn. But I do really love Painful Decision in this deck, because sending Master, uh, the Master Pendulum is always great. Uh, because you're able to bring the first one back that you sent off of your Dino Fusion, then make, like, Magister, and then immediately make another Dino Fusion, and that gets you into your Titanic Galaxy, which is, like, one of the strongest opening plays this deck has, alongside doing your things with searching counter traps and stuff. Now, uh, I'm only... <laughs> I'm playing three Solemn Strike and Warning, uh, but I've let one of my friends borrow a Solemn Strike for a regional that he's attending this weekend, so don't have it on me, but... So this is a, this is a Solemn Strike, for obvious reasons. You search these with Ariadne. Like I said, Strike is really good against the Dino deck and any True King variant. It's not really that good against the uh, like True Draco variants and stuff, but I mean, at least it's at least it's something you can probably get a masterpiece with. Maybe if they make it unaffected by spells and uh, monsters, and you have trap like negation for it. But last card in the deck is Imperial Order. Like just having this card to like try and shut out um, like certain decks from starting to play the game seems pretty strong. But so that's five traps, ten spells, and twenty-five monsters for a forty-five for a forty-card deck. Not forty-five. Jesus, there were so many fives in that sentence. But for the extra deck, uh, one copy of Ignister, obviously, uh, two copies of uh, Dinoster, and then one copy of Magister, and then the one Titanic Galaxy for the rank eight to mess with all of this stuff. Now, basically, the Draco Slayer engine is still one of the best Pendulum engines as far as like what the plays it allows you to make because all of these get you another card, which means that basically whatever. Whatever your play is like leading into is basically dictated by the size of your Pendulum Summon in this deck. Uh, so like you're just able to like keep cycling back cards and stuff like that, and then you end up replacing cards off this, getting protection, being able to out cards. Like it's just it's a perfect suite of cards. The Draco Slayer cards are always like they're always my favorite Pendulums. <laughs> like they're my favorite Pendulum monsters that have ever been printed because like the entire archetype just seems like it shouldn't work, but it's just really really potent in what it does in the extra deck. But for the next engine. We have the uh, Odd Eyes Fusion Package, we have the Rebellion Dragon, the Meteor Burst, uh, and then we have the uh, the uh, Vortex. Meteor Burst is actually summonable in this deck because you play Ghost Dash, uh, Ghost Reaper. So you can actually normal summon Ghost Reaper and make this and like actually do stuff with it. So that's why this is in here over just any other random card like say like uh, 
like another copy of Rebellion or another copy of Vortex or something like that. Like this card's actually summonable, uh, so that's why it's in here. But then going on, I also have lent out my Utopia the Lightning to my friend that is playing in a regional. So this is the Utopia Utopia the Lightning package. Um, but so I mean, uh, sorry, <laughs> trying to make videos. People let me. I let people borrow cards. Whoops. But yeah, so uh, Utopia the Lightning and Utopia. Uh, just this deck, extra deck has a lot of room. Uh, just because the main thing you're really trying to focus on is you're just trying to focus on the Draco Slayer stuff for the most part. Like these random like niche rank fours almost never actually like get made like too heavily. Um, so like it's just it's whatever. You just have the room for this sort of stuff, which is kind of interesting considering that you think this extra deck is really tight. But it's actually just not because like you're playing like ten cards towards all these little mini mini packages, and then literally all these extra five cards that I'm about to show you are just fluff. But so one Karn Gorgon, the anti luminescent knight, you can make this to protect your imperial your imperial order and stuff. Uh, one Digusto Emerald just to kind of recycle cards. It doesn't really come up that often. Uh, most of the time when you make it, it's like to recycle like the Dweller or the Dryden and Broadbull package. Uh, the reason the Dryden Broadbull package is in here is because I could play Castell. And I could play Tornado Dragon. I do not own either. I do not own Tornado Dragon, so uh, that's the problem. But until I get access to a Tornado Dragon, I'm playing Dryden and Broadbull because you can just overlay two into Broadbull, and then you can put Dryden on top of it, and then the Dryden outs multiple cards throughout the uh, the course of multiple players' turns. So it's another trap card. Uh, but like I said, you could make it Castell, you could make it uh, Tornado Dragon. But as of right now, I've actually been liking these a bit more, uh, just in terms of like this doesn't out what Tornado Dragon can out because Tornado Dragon can be an MST. But at the same time, this can have three materials under it and out up to three face-up cards. And then Dweller is just really strong in the format right now because of the Dino deck and the True King decks and stuff like that. Like, Dweller is a huge asset. Like, basically, what you want to be trying to do with this deck turn one is put out Titanic Galaxy Dweller, like, every turn one. And then based off, like, if your hand is good enough, um, like, you usually have Titanic Galaxy, Magister, and, like, Dweller, if your hand was good enough. Um, or, like, depending on the matchup, you'll just make Dryden instead of the Dweller. Which is just fine, because Titanic Galaxy redirects attacks to it so that the Dryden won't get hit by anything. So, like, that's that's all just really good and fine and dandy. But, so, that's the extra deck for this, this pile of cards, this uh, this deck. Um, I've been really enjoying playing it. Uh, it's just bring, It's been giving me a lot of nostalgia, which is really interesting, considering that it's literally only a deck from, like, early to mid-2016. I mean, shit, I played Draco Pals at 2016 Nationals. Uh, it hasn't been that long ago at all, but it still just feels like such a fresh deck because of the fact that Duelist Alliance is in here. Uh, that it's just it's really fun to play, and I actually have just really been enjoying my time playing this deck. But like I said, as far as like a competitive option, it's probably not the most viable one. You could definitely probably do well at a uh, regional, like a, a small regional with it, uh, just because like it is a pendulum deck at the end of the day, and it's one of the better pendulum decks in terms of like. Just being able to load up your pendulum scale, your uh, pendulum extra deck, and like just pendulum tons of things out, and then gain a lot of advantage off of it. Um, it's definitely one of the better decks at doing that. But that is all up to my opinion and yours as well. So, anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below on this deck and all this Nora nonsense. Do you like Draco Pals? Do you miss Draco Pals? What's the sort of nonsense that you have as far as uh, as far as thought processes towards it? Would love to know. But other than that. Check out the links in the description to my Facebook and Patreon pages. If you want to support the channel directly, then Patreon is the best way to do so. Also gives you access to a monthly raffle giveaway at the end of each month, so definitely go check out the details of that over on Patreon itself. Also, if you want to get access to my personal Discord server, my private Discord server, where me and 15 other people chat on a 24-7 hour like seven basis, then definitely check that out as well. You might find something interesting. Or if you just want to support the channel, then definitely go check that out as well. But other than that, if you want to indirectly support the channel while also buying or selling cards for yourself, then definitely check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are direct sponsor of me and this channel and i'm a big fan of how they do business with what i've dealt with thus far so definitely check out their site and let them know that phoenix sent you but other than that again let me know what your thoughts are on this deck profile in the comments down below i might play this for some dual videos in the coming days or something don't know depends on the reception that this gets i might show the other version i have of this deck as well which is the updated zoo performer pal deck which i've been messing around with all that sort of stuff but anyway again thanks for watching thanks for your time as usual again let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below and take care guys i will see you in the next video